1.7 million veterans have served in Iraq and Afghanistan over the last 16 years. And the challenges they face coming home can be varied and, of course, very daunting. The VA, as you know, came under fire for their response to veterans' needs back in 2014. And while the administration reports improvements of claims, of course, the bureaucracy and staffing hurdles are still surfacing. So joining me now to address these issues is the CEO of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, Paul Rykoff. Thank you so much for joining us, Paul. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Great to be with you, ma'am, and happy Veterans Day. Yes, and I, I do want to talk to you about some of the challenges that the VA faces and maybe some of those barriers that can be broken down, especially after they were brought you know, to light in 2014. But first and foremost, on this Veterans Day, what is the biggest challenge that, that veterans face? Is it transitioning from uh, military to civilian life? I mean, what is it that, that they face that's so difficult, and how can we help? I think it's really a disconnected civilian population. You know, we've got folks serving in dozens of cities around, uh, places around the globe, uh, and as you mentioned, over 20 million veterans of all generations. But most Americans of, of this time period haven't served, so we need to make connections. That's why Veterans Day is so important. It's a time of unity, respect, patriotism, and really a celebration of, of service. You know, Memorial Day is about recognizing those we've lost. Veterans Day is about recognizing and appreciating all those that are alive. I was with a 93-year-old World War II veteran that was at Iwo Jima a few nights ago, and it was just stunning for me to spend time with him and hear his stories and reflect on what America is really all about. Our veterans are like a North Star. They can remind us what true patriotism is all about, and thousands of them are actually right downstairs here in New York marching in the parade here and, and around the country. So it's a time of unity, celebration, and a time for civilians to connect with us in a way where our arms are open and we can all be together. And, now, and you brought up an interesting fact in some of the, uh, the work that I've seen, and, and, and you said, obviously, we need to recognize and improve services specifically for women and also pay a lot of attention to the suicide rate. I mean, this was back in 2014, but there was a study that said, on average, 20 veterans are, are committing suicide every day. That's a staggering statistic, even if, it has, even if it's lower than it was in 2014. That's still an unbelievable amount of men and women taking their own lives. What can we do? That's right. I mean, it's completely unacceptable. You know, not every veteran uh, is, is broken or wounded, but no one comes home unchanged. And we believe that veterans are not a charity, they're an investment. But now is the time to make that investment, especially in mental health, in reforming the VA, in better care for women. Uh, the suicide rate is something veterans have really been focused on for many years, but we need reinforcements. We need help. Veterans Day is the time to do that. You can go to IAVA.org, join us on Facebook and Twitter, and be a part of this movement. It, it can bring Democrats, Republicans, everybody together. And when it comes to women's care, we've got a long way to go. 20% of our uh, members are women, and they consistently report that they're not being properly recognized and supported at the VA. That's why we've launched a campaign to change that. We need White House support, and we need men, women, and all Americans to be behind us on that push. Before I let you go, Paul, I want to ask you what you think is the biggest challenge facing the VA. Obviously, we talked about the bureaucracy that, that's still there. We talked about um, claims backlog. We talked about um, the, the thought and, and the argument to privatize the VA. But I'm also cu curious about the resources that they're getting. So out of those four bullet points, what do you think is most important? I think they've got to be thrust into 2017. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's an outdated bureaucracy that's being dragged forward into present times. That's everything from technology to culture to staffing. This is a pivotal time, maybe the most important year in the VA's existence, for us to totally transform it. The fight for privatization and against privatization will be important. Uh, changing over process will be important. But I think we've got to recognize that the VA is one of, one of the largest bureaucracies in the government, I think second only to the Pentagon, and it needs massive reform. And we think veterans can be a part of that solution. Uh, the men and women coming home want to fix the VA. They want to reform government. They're running for Congress. Uh, they're great leaders. And, and any problem that America's facing, veterans are going to be a part of that solution. And we're excited to take it on, just like we have challenges overseas. Well, you're part of the solution, too, Paul. Thank you for joining us, the CEO of IAVA. If people need more information, they can obviously find you on the Internet. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am, for the attention. We appreciate it.